Good morning to my church family. I bring you greetings from the compound where Susan and I have just begun a mandatory 14-day quarantine. I so miss all of you and I pray that we will all be together in our little church soon. So there isn't any sense in me talking about the coronavirus crisis because unless you live on the moon, you are likely overwhelmed by the 24-hour news cycle already. My advice, turn off the TV and give it a rest. Spend the time reading the Bible instead. This is where we will get our heavenly wisdom, which is what we need in times like these. Uh, in 1 Peter 4.12, uh, Apostle Paul says, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through, as if something strange were happening to you. Certainly, we can be disappointed in what's happening, and even a little bit sad, but let's not be surprised. Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 to 39 says, When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's days. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time that Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. This is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. But us Adventists, our name implies that we are waiting for the imminent return of Jesus Christ. And we should be prepared. And we should be ready for the Lord's return at any time. So my, my sermon today is from this Hebrew saying. It says, Gam ze yar, yavor. And, and it means that this too shall pass. And it will, as everything does in time. And I know I've said this um, many times in the past, but it bears repeating. I can handle any trial or tribulation for the rest of my life, as long as I know that I don't have to take it into eternity. Well, let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I am so grateful for this opportunity, the technology that you've given us the ability to create, that even in these times when we are apart one from another, that we can present this presentation, this sermon, and all of us can watch it together, Lord. So even though we're not together right now in our church, we're together in our hearts, and we are so grateful to you for that, Lord. And I pray that all of our hearts would be open to hear what we have to hear from the Holy Spirit. And I pray all this in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. Well, let's talk about it. The reading for today comes from 2 Corinthians 4, 17 to 18. It says, for our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Now, it doesn't feel that way, does it? When we're in the midst of all this, it doesn't feel like our troubles are small. And it doesn't feel like they're not going to last very long. But the fact is that is true because, again, it can only last us up until when we die. It cannot last us into eternity. But yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. It's building our characters. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things that we see now will soon be gone. And I believe that's where the expression, this too shall pass, came from this reading. But the things we cannot see will last forever. So first and foremost, we have to accept the fact that we have nothing to fear. Isaiah 43, 1-3 says, But now the Lord who created you, O Israel, says, Don't be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And when you go through deep waters in great trouble, which is what we are in now, I will be with you. And when you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. And when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. I would like to say, and when you're faced with threats of the coronavirus, that I will still be there to protect you. For I am the Lord your God, your Savior, the Holy One of Israel. Matthew 6.34 goes on to say, So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. If you're out of toilet paper, call someone and we'll get it to you. If you need help with something, we should be there to help each other. We should not live in fear of what the consequences of this crisis are going to be, whether from a health perspective or from a financial perspective or whatever. This is exactly what Satan does. He sows seeds of doubt. 
in order to bring us to the point of fear. And when we're, you know, it's not just that we get fearful, we become vulnerable. But not only has that happened now, but, but this crisis has separated us one from another. We can't come together uh, today on this Sabbath day where we hug each other and hold each other and lift each other up and provide each other the support. We're apart from each other. We may be socially distanced, but we cannot afford to be socially isolated. We have to call each other and talk to each other and share with each other and have Bible studies together on this Sabbath day. If God is for us, well, who can be against us? Romans 8, 31 to 33, it says, What can we ever say to such wonderful things as these? If God is in our, on our side, who can ever be against us? And we know that Satan is against us. But the question is, how against us, what are the, what's the impact of him being against us? And if we stay close to Jesus, if we get our, our guidings from the Holy Spirit, if we don't forsake the gatherings of each other and being together, then, then nobody can be against us. It says, so since he did not spare even his own son for us, but gave him up for us all, won't he also surely give us everything else? I don't know about you, but I think the biggest challenge that I find in these times is a disruption to my routine. I don't do well when my routine is disrupted. I don't do well when structure begins to fall apart. I, I don't do very well with this type of radical change. And it's difficult. I know it's difficult for everybody, but, but I'm speaking... What, what I've been going through has been very hard because everything seems to be disrupted. And so I try to maintain this constant uh, routine that I can. My work, even though I work from home, I've been working from home. Um, but things like calling and talking to my brothers and sisters and studying the Bible and praying, those are, those are parts of a routine that help to keep me together. And I believe that, that all of us are being disrupted in one way or another. What I seek for most right now is peace. I want to find some rest uh, for my soul because this is a very disturbing time and it can be very disrupting for us. Psalm 62, 1 to 2 says, I stand silently before the Lord waiting for him to rescue me. My sal for my salvation comes from him alone. It's not going to come from scientists or from doctors or from the CDC or from the government. Certainly we have to abide by the rules. We have to observe proper hygiene. Um, we have to socially um, distance right now. But, but the salvation that we look for does not come from any of those sources. It comes only from God. Yes, he alone is my rock, my rescuer, defense, and fortress. Why then should I be tense with fear when trouble comes? John 3.8 goes on to say, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it will go next, so it is with the Spirit. We do not know on whom he will next bestow this life from heaven, and we have to be there for each other. The world relies heavily on science, and again, while we don't ignore the studies that are out there, we have to rely on faith. A Psalm 23 I've uh, recited this in times of crisis. Uh, I, th I think I probably told this story once when I was up uh, backpacking up in the, in the Adirondack Mountains. And um, uh, one uh, night, it was a foggy, rainy night, and it was about 2.30 or 3 in the morning, and I woke up to the most horrible sound I've ever heard. It sounded like someone was torturing babies or something. It was just terrible, and it scared the life out of me. And I sat in this uh, lean-to, which acted like a cacophony, uh, cacophonous ear, like this big ear just magnifying the sounds. And I, I sat there with my Bible in one hand and a flare gun in the other because I didn't know what was going on. And when daybreak came, I uh, took off down that mountain and I uh, hiked all the way into the nearest town because I was so freaked out. And that night, what, what spared me was this constant recital of the 23rd Psalm. And let's, let's read it together, um, if you can. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, I don't know about you, but when I do that, when I recite that, I feel a sense of overwhelming calm and peace in my life. Actually, I do now. Just reading it right now, I feel much better and much calmer because I have total faith that God's will will be done in one way or another here. Whatever happens to me, happens to me. I'm not going to be worried about it because I know where my destiny takes me. I know that the Lord is waiting to take me home when Jesus returns and we all go back with him. And we won't have to deal with these types of crises anymore. We need to cling close in times of adversity. Romans 8, uh, 37 to 39 says this. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, can I say, nor coronavirus, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Press together, press together, press together. I heard it once said that the best way to keep from falling off the edge is to stay in the middle. Think about the opportunity this gives us, though, to spread the gospel message. I go on my walks twice a day, every morning and every evening. I do a, a little over two-mile walk, and I see all these neighbors all the time. I've gotten to know probably a dozen people within my neighborhood that also walk regularly. In fact, there's a young couple that I just met about a month ago, and I actually, she was pregnant and expecting soon. I hadn't seen them for a couple weeks, so I knew that you know something went on. And um, yesterday, on my walk, I saw them again for the first time, and there with them in the baby carriage was Bethany, this beautiful little girl that she had just given birth to. And, and I asked them, I said, look, hey, can I see Bethany if I stay back six or eight feet? And they said, absolutely, of course. And when I got up there to see this little baby, I asked them if I could pray over this child. And they said, absolutely, yes. And they joined me in this prayer. And what a witness that we give to people that in the midst of these crises, that we're going to be okay. We're not the ones getting into fights at Sam's Club or Costco or Publix or Walmart over a roll of toilet paper or over paper towels or over the last can of spinach or whatever it might be. You know, and something else I actually noticed, too, is that um, if you go when I went to the grocery store uh, to sort of stock up on things before our quarantine yesterday, I noticed that that the pork is gone and the beef is gone and, and most of the chicken is gone and the soda are gone and the chips and the cookies and all that stuff is gone. But what there was abundance of an abundance was good, healthy breads and lots of produce uh, that was there, all the plant-based, soy milk, plenty, regular milk, none, right? And that what a witness it is for us too, even when you go through the checkout counter and everybody's stocking up on things that are not necessarily healthy and we're stocking up on things that are. Or, or when I can talk to my neighbors and, and they start to talk about how fearful this is and I can give them a little bit of faith or a little bit of hope. We, we have such an opportunity in this time um, I believe it, I heard it, Zig Ziglar said it once. He said, you can know more about a person uh, in five minutes in a time of crisis than you can get to know their whole life otherwise. Matthew 25, 35 to 40 says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? 
And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Matthew twenty-two, thirty-nine says, And a second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. We have this incredible opportunity right now uh, to be able to minister and witness to our neighbors. Luke 6, 31 says to do to others as you would like them to do to you. D don't be a panic person. Don't be pushing people out of the way and freaking out. As you want to be treated during this time of crisis, we need to learn to treat other people as well. We can also serve as a great example of what a good citizen is. Look, the rules are the rules right now, whether we like it or not. Social distancing is a rule, not gathering is a rule. I don't like not being able to go to church. I mean, I hate the fact that it's Sabbath morning and I can't be in church. It throws me off. It messes up my routine. Um, uh, it, it causes me some anxiety. But the deal is, is that I have to be a good citizen. And when the law says that you have to be um, social distancing, that you can't gather at places. When the, the Florida conference says we got to close down right now, we have to abide by those rules and regulations. You know, Susan flew home from New York uh, yesterday, yesterday evening, and, and the new law or the executive directive, the mandate in the state of Florida says if you fly in from New York, New Jersey, or Connecticut, you are required to be in a 14-day in-home or in-somewhere quarantine. And even though I don't think it's necessary and I don't like the idea of it, we have to abide by those rules. Romans 13, 1 to 2 says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Remember, God appoints and removes the leaders of these nations. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. Romans 13, 5 goes on to say, Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. Others are watching us. You know, when we were first going to keep the church open, um, a couple of people emailed me, and I thanked them for this. And they said, you know, if we do that, and we're kind of going against what the guidelines and the recommendations are, what does that say about us being rebellious to other people in the community? And that's absolutely a fact. Look, God protected the Jews from the plagues. I don't have time to get into the whole thing now, but read through Exodus and the Passover and how, how the Jews were protected from these plagues. And the big one in particular, Exodus 12, 21 to 23, it goes on to say, Then Moses called all the elders of Israel together and said to them, Go pick out a lamb or young goat for each of your families and slaughter the Passover animal. Drain the blood into a basin. Then take a bundle of hyssop branches and dip it into the blood. Brush the hyssop across the top and sides of the door frames of your houses, and no one may go out through the door until morning. For the Lord will pass through the land and strike down the Egyptians. But when he sees the blood on the top and sides of the door frames, the Lord will pass over your home. He will not permit his death angel to enter your house and to strike you down. We, the righteous, are protected. And we, we it doesn't mean that that we won't get infected. It doesn't even mean that some of us may not die. It just means that God is is th that God's providence is what's happening. God is in control. And if, if we try to take that back, things will just go south. We have to accept the fact that this is the way it is and that this too shall pass. First, we have to seek the kingdom of God. Matthew 6.33 tells us that. He says, seek the kingdom of God above all all else and to do what and to live righteously and he will give you everything you need and what is it that we need well is it toilet paper is it paper towel it's 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 faith and it's our ability to to love our neighbors like ourselves it's our ability to to reflect the character of Jesus Christ to be to be guided by the holy spirit 2 Corinthians 7, 1 says, Because we have these promises, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit, and let us work toward complete holiness because we fear God. And I would say that we should observe proper hygiene. It says in Leviticus, we don't want to touch unclean things. And if we're around places where the virus may be existed, then let's wash our hands, and let's not put our hands in our mouths and 
touch our faces and let's follow those hygienic guidelines that we're given. We have to pray, pray, pray. We have to pray for healing, for safety, for protection, for recovery, for strength, for compassion, for mercy, not just for us, but for all the people out there that are sick. You know who I pray for the most are the non-believers, the ones who see this as some horrible, tragic, apocalyptic end where there's nothing beyond this and no hope to bring them into the future. Those are the people I pray the most for because those are the ones that I believe need the prayer. You know, I, I, I read this, I don't know where I read it, but a little saying once and it said that those who need loving the most deserve it the least. And in closing, I want to read this to you. This is one of my favorite um, readings. It, it was in the Review and Herald uh, a long time ago, uh, many people give credit to Ellen White for this. She did not write this. It was um, somebody who wrote in uh, to, the, to the magazine. And, and it goes like this. It says, prayer is the answer to every problem in life. It puts us in tune with the divine wisdom, which knows how to adjust everything perfectly. So often we do not pray in certain situations because from our standpoint, the outlook is hopeless. But nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is so entangled that it cannot be made right by the loving spirit of God. No mistake is so, is so bad that it cannot be remedied with God's help. No human relationship is too strained for God to bring about reconciliation and understanding to all concerned. No habit is so deep-rooted that it cannot be overcome. No one is so weak that he cannot be made strong. No one is so ill that he cannot be healed. No mind is so dull that it cannot be made brilliant. Whatever we need or desire, if we trust God, he will supply it. If there is anything that is causing us to worry or be anxious, especially right now in this time of crisis, let us stop rehearsing the difficulty and trust the healing life, love, and power of God. Amen? Let's close with prayer. Yivrecha Adonai v'yishmarecha, Ya'ar Adonai panavalecha v'yikunecha, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and bring you peace. And we all said, Amen. God bless all of you. I love you. I miss you. And I so look forward to seeing all of you soon. Good day.